everyone, Susie here, and today we're playing King Arthur Legends Rise. For today's video, I'm going to go through some interesting things that you probably missed. Alrighty, and if it's your first time finding me because of King Arthur, hello, hello, I used to go by Ivy League Gaming. I have played gacha games for quite a while, starting with Raid Shadow Legends, which I quit a couple years ago. I played so many more since, and it's fun to try another one. And this one's going really well. I didn't like it at all at first, but now I do. Um, it grew on me the past few days. Now that I'm getting deeper into the gameplay, and I'm genuinely excited and curious to start working with the different bosses and team synergies. But for today's video, I wanted to start going through some things that I've noticed that maybe aren't so obvious, like easy menus that are like very or easy things buttons menus that are easy to miss um features that you probably don't even realize are there and yeah just, just some quirky things about this game so our first thing that you might have missed is related to equipment crafting did you realize you can craft without the top items i say this because on the very first day that i unlocked this I saw zero out of one for here and zero out of one for here, which now I have this. And I was like, ah, shit, what the hell? I clicked this and I'm like, okay, how do I get this? We have to wait until chapter one of hard battle one four to unlock this. Why the hell are they showing me equipment crafting if I can't even use it until chapter one? Why did they unlock it early? I was really annoyed. Um, I set it down. I walked away. Um, and then I... Took, it took my husband, Odd One Gaming, who's also playing this, to be like, you can craft, you don't need those things. Those, I was like, you don't? But this is the reality. These extra items just boost the chances of getting a higher rarity item. So you can see here, if I click it and it's glowing blue like the other things, it's activated. If I don't, it's not. So you can craft without this. Just craft what you want. The Vigor sets I know are going to be really important. Um, recharges one extra vigor at the start of a turn. That's amazing. I realized I probably should have got that instead of the heal set. I did a heal set for my healer because heal set for healer. We're always going to have a healer, right? But I'm kind of thinking I should have got a vigor set now. But yeah, save. I would say don't use these fancy resources. Save those for when you're crafting five and six, six star items of your best sets, which are probably going to be more like the elemental stuff. Or, I don't know, there's there's a whole bunch um, that we can unlock later on that are really, really interesting. Or when it comes to these special materials getting... Uh, there's like all this stuff we haven't even unlocked yet, personally. Because I am I started a little slow and I'm trying to catch up. But that is one little thing that you might not have realized. And I say that because I saw someone else comment in another Discord forum thinking the same thing about like, why? what's the point of crafting? How do I get those items if... Why, why, why are they showing it to me? All right, the next thing that you might have missed is during a battle, you can target your enemy to make sure you're beating the boss. So let's go ahead on into one of the dungeons. I guess I will do... Um, I know you have a tusk for this one, right? This is a good example. Let's just do uh, stage six of Plane of Beasts. There's my... I think that's my team. Oh, God. So I have another quirky thing about this that we're actually going to mention. So let's go in and start the battle. Skip the animation, even though it's cool. All right, so here we go. Boom. We're, we're battling, but it's attacking. Let's say they're attacking the tusk. You don't want them to attack the tusk. You just have to click on the boar. See how it like, look at the, the arrows. It's pointing very directly at the boar. And then if you click the tusk, it's pointing very directly at the tusk. Kind of like in Dragonair, how they show the lines of where, who's attacking who. This is the same in AFK Journey. But like, if you want to take out the tusk first, you can boom, click the tusk, make them take out the tusk first. It probably, it really depends on your team for some of these. Sometimes it's better to take out the extra things first. Sometimes it's better just to go all in and attack the boss. But that, see how fast that was actually attacking the tusk? And now, boom, the focus is just on the boss. Easy to easy peasy. So if you are trying to get through um, a level that you're stuck on, maybe try prioritizing different things while you're doing your full auto run. If you are using 
the full auto up here in the corner. All right, the next thing you might have missed is the need to screenshot and save your best teams. Whether that's writing it down on a piece of paper, taking a screenshot, recording a video, whatever you do that makes you remember stuff. There's a little bit of a quirky thing happening in this game that I'm not sure if it's a bug or if it's correct. So, okay, Planes of Beasts. This is my team, right? We have Tristan, Merlin... Um, which I probably could adjust this a little. Uh, but yeah, Tristan, Merlin, um, Anguish, and Isolde. Okay, now, I want to try to beat Planes of Beast 7, okay? But let's say I want to bring in, um, um, I don't know. Who should I bring in instead? It's for the sake of argument. Let's just bring in not her and pretend that Clementine is built. Um, she's not, but let's just bring her in. Okay. Let's try to beat Planes of E7, right? Or four, 7, yeah, 7. Okay. Okay, okay. I'm just gonna let this full auto and then fail because my healer is gonna die. And then I will come right back and show you what this is all about. <laughs> all right, so let's say you were experimenting with your teams. Oh, damn. Well, that sucked. All right, I'm just gonna go back and farm what I was farming with this, right? Okay. Clementine was not what I was using for stage six. So if you're just like quickly going from one to the other, adjusting, all right, I'm going to just set up my multi-battles and farm. Oh, wait. <laughs> it remembers what you did last. And I do believe that also, well, I know because I see how it saves. It's the skill presets too. Like if you prioritize, okay, use her, use Anguish's um, third as ultimate first his second skill second and then merlin's second skill first and his third skill second if you did that for your other one and then you and this one was different it's going to remember what you last did not what you actually did for your successful runs so if you have something that's really successful and you're going on to experiment trying out different characters make sure you t save a screenshot of what worked really well and make sure that does include any sort of prioritization you did or the skill presets that you did if they were very specific and quirky uh you want to make sure you save it because the game does not remember what you did successfully it remembers what you did last <laughs> all right next we have the market so this tip is to make sure that you purchase anything you want from the market before you do any sort of upgrades so I had market level one out of two this morning, okay? And what I did was I purchased everything that I'd want to purchase normally, which is most everything. I want these orbs. I definitely want these orbs. Okay, cool. The talisman. I don't even know if that's good value or not. Honestly, that might be dumb. Um, This, I don't even know what this is yet, but let's just purchase it. Bye bye gold. Okay, fine. And refresh, right? You get one free refresh. Use it. Okay, purchase again, right? So, okay, you, you sold out. You're waiting for the shop to refresh. If you upgrade your market and come back, immediately after you've upgraded your market, it's refreshed. And you can go ahead and buy all that again. I already bought out the shop. And then literally the second I finished upgrading my market, boom, I could again. So... That was just really cool to see. The next thing I want to mention is, did you even realize that there's a fitting room? So this is our like tip number five, uh, detailed equipment settings. Guys, you can try on stuff before you, um, yeah, commit to it. So let's say, uh, do I want to steal Merlin's set for her? Okay, let's see. Oh, um, where's another speed thing? Okay, I don't, I'm not going to do it. Whatever. But you get the idea. You can ha put all of your gear on. See how that's going to change your build with the red and the blue. And decide whether or not you want to do it or not. So this is just amazing because, unfortunately, like Raid Shadow Legends, this is the only other game I played, which I think Summoner's War does it, but I barely played that only for a week and didn't really even like it. Um... 
unfortunately, except for those games, which makes sense because, like, they come from the same vein. Raid copied Summoner's War in a lot of areas. That's how it got started. Summoner's War was kind of the pioneer of this genre, from what I understand. And yeah, unfortunately, I've played probably... I could probably list at least 10, maybe 15 or 20. I'm not even kidding. Other games in this gacha genre that are turn-based or auto chess that do not charge when you move gear around. But this does. So it at least like Raid, it does have a fitting room. So you can actually filter pretty good too. You can filter by the sets. You can filter by star and rarity um, and main stats and sub stats. So... It's actually a pretty solid fitting room, and I think it's just a really nice addition to have this already at the start of the game. Now let's go to our clans. So one thing I wanted to mention is the reality of your clan cooldown. So if you want to leave your clan, um, there I am. Okay, leave clan. If you leave your clan and you want to go to another one, it takes 24 hours for the cooldown. If you get kicked from your clan, some games, if you get kicked instead of move, they don't make you wait as long. Nope, still takes 24 hours. So unfortunately, you could have just joined a random clan, done your clan raid for the day, and then so you're, they could have kicked you because they don't know you or whatever. And you are just screwed for 24 hours to join another clan. So I just really wanted to mention that. I think it must mention it somewhere, right? It must mention it somewhere. It does say, um, it does show the join and establish. This will have a cooldown. Yeah, it actually doesn't say. Oh, interesting. It actually doesn't say clearly. So good thing I'm saying it, I guess, because it doesn't clearly tell you that if you want, are you sure you want to leave? You will have to wait 24 hours before joining another clan. Does it say that? I don't remember and I don't want to test to find out and accidentally leave my clan. So yeah, th that's just something really important to know. And if you want to be like, oh, leader, can you kick me so I have a shorter cooldown? Unfortunately, no, they don't allow that. So it's really dumb when games have a long cooldown in the first few days of an account because many people just join a random clan before they get set in one that they actually want to be with. Just in the meantime, you're like, oh, we don't have a spot for you. Hold on. We'll, we'll let you know when we have a spot. 20 minutes later, you're like, oh, we got a spot. Go ahead. And you're like, I just joined another clan. So unfortunately, that's not the best. Um, yeah. And then we have clan attendance. So clan members. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Clan missions. There's all this stuff. But there's also this attendance. And this is something really important for even a casual clan to be aware of. And if you're going to play this game and be in a clan, even if you're in a casual one, open the game, click it, click the clan section to sign in, and that's it. Close the game if you have to. If you cannot play because you're just busy, life's busy, whatever, that's logical. But please, everyone, try to help your clans. Because look at this. There's only 25 people in a clan, right? And the only way to get the special summoning ticket every day, which is amazing, right? That's a free ticket. Free summon every single day. The special ones, too. But you have to have every single person check in. Which, that can be rough. Even in an active clan, someone might forget to log in to the clan thing one day. Like, that's, that's life, right? You're gonna forget. So, this is something to keep in mind, even if you're running a more casual clan... You might have to really be like, if you miss multiple and cause us not to get our rewards, that's when people start to, you know, boot. <laughs> boot people, um, even if it's casual, you still are hurting your clan for just not clicking it for five seconds and closing the game. So try to keep that in mind. If Even if you're traveling busy, log in, help your clan out, and close the game if you can't do anything at all. Or have a friend log in for you, at least. Alright, there's another thing that's kind of shown, you can see here, that I want to talk about. And that is the rate information for, like, every resource in the game is pretty much shown. Now, if it's something that can drop, right? So, okay, rate info. This opens up this. 
you can actually see the drop rates of like everything in the game. Did you realize that? Did you even click? Probably not. So from the special summons, the individual drop rates of every single hero is here. There's no hiding it. So when it comes to the um, legendaries, are some legendaries more popular or easier to drop than others? No, they are equal rates, exactly the same. What about rares? Are some rares more common than others? No, they're not. They specify every single individual hero and what their rate is. Now, this is something that's really important because a lot of games like Raid and Watcher of Realms have received some heat for not showing this. Dragonair doesn't show this either. But I really think for certain markets, especially the Asian markets like China, and I think Belgium is very strict as well with um, the gambling laws. If you don't display the rates of a gotcha thing, they don't allow it. So that's that's a quirky thing that this actually allows them to um, please the gambling laws of most countries by setting this. And then it's transparent. If they start to make certain legendary characters a little bit more harder to pull than others, we should be able to see that right here. And it's not just summons. Look at this. Like this section summon, rate up summon, rise summon, relic shard summon item, random keepsake chest. Exactly what can drop from those. The rates for everything. It's so interesting. Random material chest. Equipment crafting, right? Um, crafting three to four star. What is your exact chances to get a four star versus a three star? It's actually pretty interesting that they show this. And then you can see what happens when you use those high grade materials that we talked about in the first tip. It makes it even a playing field of getting four star versus three star legendary versus rare. 25% chance. Boom. When you use those. I think that's just really cool to be that transparent when using both of those items, to be clear. Um, equipment shop. So what is this? Chances for... Okay, it's being slow, of course. Breath. So uh, what is going to show in the stock list, even? Even what shows in the shop list. What's in stock? What can you purchase? What are the chances that you're going to have something show up in the shop? That's so crazy. Like, this is so nice to have pure transparency in all of this sort of stuff with Raid Info. I think a lot of people would appreciate that. All right, and another thing that I, unfortunately, we can't really do too much about because if you have stamina capped like I do right now and you want to go use it, you're going to get experience, which levels up your account. But it is important to know that when you transition levels, like right now, um, I'm level 18, about to be level 19, and I, I'm capped on my stamina. So if I go and use my stamina because, oh crap, I'm capped, I'm probably going to level up and get full again. So if you're busy and you don't have the time to leave open the game to be able to farm another cap, try to do the bare minimum of what gets you not fully capped, and or is like and keeping an eye on if you're about to go over your points. I don't know exactly. Like they don't really show exactly like how many points you get for things. I haven't really paid that much attention yet. Um, but depending on how high your level is, it's more dramatic or not. But every time you do a bunch of restricted area power of dungeons or whatever, you are going to level up quickly, especially if you're doing the times two times three ones as well. And then every time you level up. If you're like, just, I don't want to be kept on my stamina before I close the game. Oh crap, I leveled up. I'm full on my stamina again. It is just something to be aware of if you're trying to time how you're playing. Especially if you're trying to really min-max your stamina and never be capped. Which I've given up on trying to do that in these games personally. <laughs> Alright, and we have one more tip related to this actually. Restricted area that I want to show for this video that you probably missed because... You wouldn't really think about it. You have all these achievements. There's some really great rewards that come here. Really great rewards, actually. So, like, I've got a whole bunch already. Look look what what's to come. More legendary orbs, a ton of stamina, four-star gear. Okay, cool. We want to get all of this as soon as we can, right? Why wouldn't we? All right, so achievements. Some of the achievements are not retroactive. So, restricted area. 
I think this restricted area section for the achievements did not open as soon as our restricted area did because look at my first two. Clear Plane of Beasts Floor 2. I just cleared Floor 6. You guys saw me do it in this video. Burning Land Floor 2. I've definitely done that. So now we specifically have to go to Floor 2, which is so silly. And then see, there it is again, remembering the team that is not my team. We just have to quickly go do it just for the sake of this um, achievement and waste stamina on a lower level because it's not retroactive. So that's kind of lame. I think they should definitely fix that, but whatever. We're going to just kill this boss pretty quick anyway. Why are they not using their multi? There we go. I was like, why did they not use the right skill? But yeah, in the... <laughs> sometimes everything is not um, retroactive and I just want to do that i wanted to mention this one last is just a little reminder to make sure you don't forget to ch double check like you you're just gonna mostly go in there click okay cool i did more okay cool i did more you're, I, I think it's very easy to um forget to double check if there's something we missed right so that you saw that little pop-up it was there and even though i did stage six it wasn't good enough it's not do stage two or higher it's do exactly stage two, floor two. Had to be that exact stage in order for it to count. So if you see any of these, clear plane of Be beasts, floor three. Now I have to go do three, exactly, and et cetera, et cetera. So take a look here if you haven't already done so, and make sure that you're not being held back on a ton of achievements to help you get those rewards, because you have to go and do all these low level things that should already have counted, but unfortunately they didn't. But all right, guys, that's all for this video for things you probably missed. I hope it was helpful. There's a lot. I'm sure I could have made 20 or 30 things on this, but we're just going to stop there for today. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.